Hello and welcome to Let's Play Beneath Nightmare Castle by Peter Darville Evans. Uh, this is book number 25 in the Fighting Fantasy series. Here's the front cover. There we go. Okay, let's read the synopsis. Fighting Fantasy books, over 10 million copies sold worldwide. Creatures from your worst nightmares lie beneath Neuberg Keep. In this book, you find yourself in Neuburg, once a pleasant town in Kool, but now home to the vile monsters begotten of warped sorcery. An age-old horror has been reawoken deep beneath the keep, and it is up to you to face it and free the town and your friend Baron Tholder from evil enchantment. But beware, deep underground lie hideous traps and terrors waiting to ensnare you. Will you succeed? Only if you are the resourceful hero you claim to be. Two dice, a pencil and an eraser are all you need for this adventure. You decide which routes to follow, which dangers to risk and which monsters to fight. Cover illustration by Terry Oakes. There we go. Okay, there's the front cover again. Okay, Puffin Books, Beneath Nightmare Castle. Um... You are a travel-weary hero, returning to the town of Neuburg in Kool to visit your old friend Baron Tholder, when a moment of carelessness lands you in captivity. Will you escape? And even if you do, what will you find in Neuburg? For things have changed there, all is not as it seems, uh, and beneath the keep lie hideous horrors which you must face if you are to free the town from the ghastly hand of grim sorcery, and rid it once and for all from the resurrected terror of the past. Two dice, a pencil and an eraser are all you need to embark on this thrilling adventure which is complete with its elaborate combat system and a score sheet on which to record your gains and losses. Many dangers lie ahead and your success is by no means certain. You decide which routes to follow, which dangers to risk and which monsters to fight. Okay, so we've done um, book 23, Masks of Mayhem. Um, I've also done Creatures of Havoc, um, book number 24, so now we're on book number 25, Beneath Nightmare Castle. Okay, Steve Jackson and Ian Livingstone present Beneath Nightmare Castle by Peter Darville Evans, illustrated by Dave Carson. Okay, for Cheryl, that's a, that's a strange spelling of Cheryl. Anyway, here we go. Okay, so um, I'll put a time, or rather, I'll put a couple of timestamps in the video description. The first one will be to skip to the first, or not the first, uh, the first, um, the first timestamp will be to skip to the background information, and the second timestamp will be to skip to the first paragraph. There we go. Okay, your character. You are a warrior, a skilled and hardy adventurer. Your last escapade was less than successful, and you face your next adventure with little money and no food. Your abilities, however, are as noteworthy as ever. Um, you will use dice to determine your exact attributes, and on pages 18 to 19 there is an adventure sheet on which you will record your scores and the incidents of your adventure. Use a pencil or make photocopies of the adventure sheet, as you will almost certainly need to make more than one attempt to solve the mystery beneath Nightmare Castle. Skill, stamina, luck and willpower. Roll one die, add six to the score and enter the total in the skill box on the adventure sheet. Okay, let's do that. Okay, and we've got a six first time, that's good. I normally accept anything over um, four, or four or over, but we got um, six, which gives me 12 skill, that's good. Uh, roll two dice, add 12 to the score and enter the total in, in the stamina box. Okay, roll two dice. 11, that's quite good. I normally accept anything 9 or over. So 11 plus, uh, plus 12 is 23. So we get 23 initial stamina. Okay, luck. Roll one die, add 6 to the score and enter the total in the luck box. Okay, roll one die. Yes. Oh, 6 again, blimey. This, this is uh, very unexpected. Okay, that gives us 12 luck. Uh, roll one die, add six to the score, and enter the total in the willpower box. Five, that's pretty good. Okay, so we get 11 willpower. 
Okay, brilliant. Um, these are your initial scores, um, and you must keep a permanent record of them. All your scores may change during your adventure, but they will exceed your initial amounts only on very rare occasions. You must keep a record of all changes to your scores, so write small or use a rubber. How come it says rubber here, but before it said eraser? Um, because this bit was written by the author, and the other bits are written by... Uh, someone else. Anyway, that's why. Um, your skill score reflects your expertise in combat, your ability with weapons, and your dexterity. Your stamina is your health, fitness, and ability to survive wounds and physical hardship. Your luck score shows how lucky you are. Willpower is a measure of your mental stability and determination. The higher it is, the more you can cope with pain, despair, and unpleasant surprises. Okay combat during your uh, during the course of your adventure you will meet other people and creatures some of them will attack you others you will decide to fight the procedure for resolving battles is described below skill and stamina scores are given in the text for each opponent that you meet write these scores in the first vacant monster encounter box on the adventure sheet record also any special abilities or instructions that are unique to this particular opponent the sequence is then Roll two dice for your opponent. Add the total to his skill score. This is his attack strength. Two. Roll two dice and add the total to your current skill score. This is your attack strength. Three. If your attack strength is the higher, you have wounded your opponent. Go to step four. If your opponent's attack strength is higher, he has wounded you. Go to step five. If the attack strength totals are the same, you have avoided each other's blows. Start a new attack round from step one. Four. Subtract two points from your opponent's stamina. You may be able to... You may be able to deduct additional points if you use your luck, see below, or if you have a special weapon, go to step 6. 5. Subtract 2 points from your stamina. You may use your luck to reduce this loss, see below. 6. Make sure you have recorded on the adventure sheet all adjustments to stamina and luck scores. 7. Begin the next attack round, starting again at step 1. This sequence continues until either you or your opponent has a stamina score of 0. If your opponent's stamina score reaches 0, you have killed him or her and can continue with your adventure. If your stamina score reaches 0, you are dead. You must start the adventure again from the beginning, having rolled dice to create a new character. You may be given the opportunity to escape from some opponents if you decide to do so the battle ends but your opponent automatically wounds you once as you flee you must deduct two stamina points you can use your luck on this wound as on any other see below often you will have time to fight more than one opponent at the same time sometimes you will treat them as a single opponent sometimes you will be able to fight them one at a time and sometimes all of them will be able to attack you while you defend yourself and attack only one of them Specific instructions will be given whenever you meet more than one opponent. Using luck in combat. You can use your luck in combat to inflict a particularly serious wound or to minimise a wound that has been inflicted on you. Whenever you wound an opponent, you may test your luck. Roll two dice. If the total score is equal to or less than your luck score, you have been lucky. If the total is higher than your luck score, you are unlucky. Whatever the result, you must deduct one point from your current luck score. If you are unlucky, you have inflicted a, serious, uh, a severe wound. Uh, deduct an ex extra two points from your opponent's stamina. If you're unlucky, you have merely grazed him and you deduct one less point of stamina than normal. If you have been wounded, you can test your luck in exactly the same way. Remember to deduct one point from your luck whenever, um, whatever the result. If you are lucky, the wound was only a glancing blow and you can deduct one less point of stamina than, than usual. If you are unlucky, the wound is more serious to uh, deduct one extra stamina point. Hints on play. Skill. Your skill will not change much during your adventure and you should change it own change it only if given specific instructions in the text as skill is a measure of combat prowess it can be reduced by losing a weapon or by the effects of poison uh, for instance acquiring a magical weapon could increase your skill but remember that you can only use one weapon at a time Stamina. Your stamina will change frequently during your adventure as you suffer wounds and then recover. At various times you will be given opportunities to eat meals and to buy provisions. Eating a meal normally restores up to four points of stamina. You may eat only one meal at a time, even though you may have more in your backpack. That's interesting because normally it doesn't specify that. Um, unless specifically stated, your stamina may never exceed its initial score. Luck. There will be times when the success or failure of your exploits will depend entirely on your luck. You will be given instruct you will be instructed to test your luck. The procedure for which is as follows. Roll two dice. If the total score is equal to or less than your luck score, you are lucky. If the total is higher than your luck score, you are unlucky. Whatever the outcome, you must deduct one point from your luck score. As you will see, the more you use your luck, 
the less likely you are to be lucky. There will be occasions when you are able to recover some points of luck, but unless specifically stated, your score cannot exceed its initial value. Willpower. Willpower works in exactly the same way as luck, and the procedures and comments described above for luck apply equally to willpower. As with luck, you must remember to deduct a point from your willpower score after each time that you test your willpower. There is, however, one extra pitfall. At the start of your adventure, you are already tired and you are about to meet a succession of horrible and unnatural creatures. If your willpower drops below six points and you then test your willpower unsuccessfully, you will lose your grip on sanity and your adventure will be over. Okay, so... If it drops below six points and we're unsuccessful, it's game over. Okay, uh, equipment. You trudge down from the hills with only your armour, your sword and your backpack. Let's type that down. Armour. Um, uh, whoops. Sword. Backpack. Okay, fantabulous. Um, you have no food and very little money. It doesn't specify how much money we have. Um... Okay, so we have no provisions at the moment, so let's just put that down. And money, or gold, very little. My definition of very little is a billion, so I now have a billion gold. Um, getting started, Neuberg is a dangerous place and you are very unlikely to, to succeed in your mission at the first attempt. It is recommended that you make notes and draw a map as you explore. There is a way to succeed that involves little risk of death or madness, even if you start with low initial scores. I disagree. There are many more routes that lead to failure and unpleasant fates. Start with the background section. Then go on to the section headed with the number one. After that, go to whichever numbered section um, to which you are instructed. Do not read sections you have not been told to. It amounts to cheating and will lessen your enjoyment. Okay, adventure sheet, which has not been written on, good. Although the, the book from which this is copied has not been written on, which is good. Anyway, background, here we go. Yes, yeah, so I'll timestamp this in the video description. Captured, netted, strung up and helpless, um, you curse yourself for an inattentive fool. So much for the peace and quiet... I'll start that again, actually. Captured, netted, strung up and helpless, you curse yourself for an inattentive fool. So much for the peace and quiet of civilization. It was daydreaming about the comforts of home that got you into this mess, but even the hardiest adventurer can tire of life in the wilderness and begin to yearn for a soft bed, and it was difficult to think of anything else as you trudged to the summit of the last of the foothills and glimpsed the town of Neuburg basking in the afternoon sun. You know Neuburg, uh, or rather you know Neuburg, you have been here once before. It is not a large settlement, but you remember it as peaceful and prosperous. Now, the black battlements of the keep of Neuburg seem to loom threateningly over the little town, but Baron Tholder, the margrave of Neuburg keep, is an old friend of yours. He is more than a friend, in fact. He is a comrade in arms. Now, the two of you fought side by side at the Battle of Helm Hill, a renowned victory which has so far prevented any further incursions by the southerners of the steppes. You had been looking forward to seeing the old warrior again, and instead you have let yourself be caught by a band of those very same southern barbarians. Nearing the end of a hard trek down from the mountains with the rooftops of Neuberg in sight and your head filled with thoughts of a hearty meal, you failed to notice the warning signs. Now the bushes at the side of the trail rustled, and not quite at the same time as the wind gusted across the hills. Birdsong broke out as you approached a solitary tree, and you should have noticed that it was not entirely like any birdsong you had heard before. At any other time you would have stopped and looked around before stepping under that overhanging branch. It was such an obvious place for a trap. And then the ground gave way beneath your feet. Voices shouted in an unfamiliar tongue. You struggled but could hardly move. And here you are. It's dark. You're in a pit. The ropes about you are pulled tight, tighter. Um, you move, uh, the ropes about you are pulled more tightly or tied it depends if you're describing the motion or the actual ropes themselves anyway um you move upwards uh, out into the light you are in a net hanging from a branch and you are surrounded by silent swordsmen swathed in flowing robes as you spin slowly their glittering eyes and gleaming blades seem to circle you you glimpse the, uh, the lowering shape of neuberg keep and then something very heavy hits the back of your head pain 
flashing lights, you lose all consciousness. Now turn over. Okay, here's paragraph one. Again, I'll put a timestamp for this bit. Um, you wake. A particularly insistent dwarf blacksmith seems to be using your head as an anvil. Your hands and feet are tightly bound, and the blindfold covers your eyes. You cannot move, you cannot see, and you can hear only distant, indistinct sounds. Time passes. The pain in your head subsides to a dull throb. Nothing else happens. Then you hear a voice, an urgent whisper. My friend, hush, say nothing. I have a sharp knife knife um, but i dare not stay long i cannot enter through this small space you must pull yourself a little to your right and i will sever your bonds hurry do you trust this unknown voice and shuffle nearer in the hope that your ropes will be cut if so turn to 331 if you re if you reject this offer of help turn to 130 okay we're going to trust the voice and turn to 331 Um, you shuffle awkwardly to the right, encouraged by the mysterious voice. That's right, my friend, that's right, just a little further now, but please hurry. I dare not be found here. I am in mortal fear for my life, but perhaps you are the one we are expecting, and I cannot let those southerners take you. That's it, that's it, I have your ropes now. So, and you feel the bonds falling from your wrists. You tear off your blindfold and wrench the ropes from your ankles. You are in a cellar. A little light enters from an open door at the top of a steep flight of narrow stairs. Of your rescuer, there is no sign. I'll say that again. Of your rescuer, there is no sign. There appears to be no other door. Do you want to search the cellar, turn to 59, or, or will you escape up the staircase, turn to 215? Okay, we're going to escape up the staircase and turn to 215. You emerge into a circular stone room. There are no guards, and your sword and pack are lying on the floor. You collect them, and then peer through the slits that pierce the thick wall. You realise that you are in the ground floor room of one of the towers of Neuburg's east gate. One of the slits gives you a clear view west along the main street, leading to the centre of town. The sun has set behind the buildings, but the whole scene is lit by a beautiful red sky. Everything is very peaceful too peaceful. The streets are almost deserted. There are no shouts from the riverside wharves, no priests, priests chanting in the temples, no dogs snuffling in the piles of refuse, and no revellers stumbling from the inns. The silence is eerie. You are determined to investigate, but first you must escape from this gatehouse. The one door is of solid oak, banded with iron and is locked from the outside you will have to try to force it open add together your skill and stamina scores roll one die eight times and add the results together if the total is less than your combined skill and stamina turn to 399 otherwise turn to 41 okay our combined skill and stamina is 35 so now we're going to roll a die eight times okay okay that's six seven 10, 15, that's four rolls, 17, 23, that's six rolls, 29, uh, that's seven rolls, and 35, that's, um, uh, that's eight rolls. Okay, so we got 35, and our combined total was eight, uh, 35, so what do we do? Uh, if the total is less than your combined skill and stamina, turn to 399. It wasn't, it was equal, so therefore we're turning to 41. Brilliant. This is what I didn't want to happen, because now I have to do this. Oh yes. What are the odds of getting three sixes in a row? Um, one out of 216. Brilliant. So I beat those odds, and now I have to fight... Um, and uh, Now I have to fight... Uh, all these swordsmen. The door shudders from the impact of your shoulder and splinters fly as you wield your sword, but you are unable to force your way out. After many exhausting attempts, you are gathering your strength for, for a renewed onslaught when you hear approaching footsteps. Your captors are returning. You will have to fight them all, but you can improve your chances by attacking as they appear in the doorway. You can fight them one at a time. You flatten yourself against the wall as you hear heavy bars being lifted. The door opens and you launch yourself at the first of six swordsmen. Here we go. Right, okay. 
<clears throat> right, I need to make more of these, don't I? There we go. Okay, I need. I might as well write first swordsman and second swordsman now. If I just have swordsman, I can just write second and then and then copy and paste swordsman. Third swordsman. Uh, fourth swordsman. Fifth swordsman. And finally, sixth swordsman. There we go. Okay, what are they? Five, five, six, four. Five, five, six, four. Okay, um, all right, off we go. All right, um, roll for him first. So, five. Five plus four is nine. I get uh, seventeen. Nine to seventeen. Put some down to three. Okay, five plus eleven is sixteen. I get nineteen. So sixteen to nineteen. Okay. Five plus Two is seven, I get sixteen. Seven to sixteen. So another first one. Okay, next one. His one is um, six and four. Six plus five is eleven, I get fifteen. Eleven to fifteen. And a two. Six plus. 6 is 12, I get 20, 12 to 20. Right, so that's that, pretty sure I'm 12 skill, yeah, good. <laughs> okay, so that's the end of the uh, the second swordsman, so now we can do the third and fourth ones, or just the third one, really. can't remember their uh, thingamabob there. 4, 6, 5, 5. 4, 6, 5, 5. Five and five. Uh, oh yeah, off we go then. Um, four, six. So four plus uh, eleven is fifteen. I get uh, sixteen. I believe would still nearly beat me. Fifteen to sixteen. Down to four. Uh, four plus six is ten. I get eighteen. So ten to eighteen. Down to two. Whoops. Four plus three is seven. I get um, twenty-three. Seven to twenty-three. That's that. Okay. Now we're doing the fourth one. Five and five. Uh, five plus twelve is seventeen. I get twenty-two. Seventeen to twenty-two. And a three. Five plus seven is twelve. I get twenty-three. Uh, so twelve to twenty-three. Whoops. Down to one. Um, five plus eight is thirteen. I get twenty. Thirteen to twenty. Right, that's another fourth one right now for the last two. Four, three, and uh, four, eight. Okay, four, three, and four, eight. All right, four, three, and four, eight. All right, off we go. Four, three first. Four plus seven is eleven. I get twenty-three. Eleven to twenty-three. Down to one. I won't use luck. It's a waste on such easy enemies. Um, four plus ten is fourteen. I get twenty. So fourteen to twenty. Right, it's into the uh, fifth one right now for the last one. Four and eight. Off we go. Four plus six is ten. I get twenty-one. Ten to twenty-one. 
down to six. Uh, four plus eight is 12, I get 18. So 12 to 18, it's down to four then, I'll do it now. 12 to 18. Four plus five is nine, I get 19. So nine to 19. It's very rare I put a single digit number in there. Okay, uh, 4 plus 10 is 15, I get 19. So 14 to 19, that's him dead. Right, there we go. Okay, that's the end of all of them at last, blimey. Okay, off we go. Let's get rid of any buzzing just in case we have any. If you manage to kill them all, go to 315. If your stamina falls to two or less, the southern warriors take advantage of your weakness and beat you into unconsciousness. Turn to 266. Okay, we did manage to kill them all and turn to 350, and we're turning to 315. Well, because I got, uh, I beat one out of 216 odds um, by getting three sixes in a row. Unbelievable. Right, okay, 315. Stepping over the bloody corpses of your failed opponents, you leave the gatehouse and stand in its shadow at the edge of the town. You need somewhere to rest, eat, and nurse your wounds. You remember that the Southern Star Tavern, in a prominent position on Neuberg's Market Square, was a busy and friendly establishment. Turn to 119. Off we go. As you head west to the market square, you notice that the few householders you can see are hastily barring their doors and shuttering their windows. When you reach the Southern Star Tavern, it appears to be closed. Pounding on the boards with the pommel of your sword brings the innkeeper to the door. It is easy to rent a room as there are no other guests. You eat a solitary meal by the light of a candle in the, in the gloom of the inn's shuttered common room. In, you eat a solitary meal by the light of a candle in the gloom of the inn's shuttered common room. I recover up to four points of stamina, which I don't need because I didn't get hurt, if you have lost any so far. You, uh, you decide to ask the innkeeper what is going on in Neuberg. You have to choose whether you will reveal your past association with Baron Tholder, 10 to 164, or whether you will keep this information to yourself, 10 to 301. Okay, um, we're going to reveal our past association with Baron Tholder. And turn to 164. You know Baron Tholder. Any friend of our Margrave is welcome here. You must try a glass of our very special Neuberg brandy. No, perhaps you have experienced it before. But wait, the innkeeper looks at you sharply. How can I be sure you are not trying to trick me? You say you are at Helm Hill, but that battle is common knowledge. Can you prove you know Baron Tholder? Concealed in your belt, you keep a bejeweled gold ring inscribed with a comradely message from the Margrave. It would prove that you know him, but it is immensely valuable, and you would tempt all but the most honest of men. If you want to show it to the innkeeper, turn to 343. If you would rather drop the subject of Baron Tholder, turn to 301. Okay, we're going to show it to the innkeeper and turn to 343. A pretty gift indeed, the Margrave plainly... Uh, a pretty gift indeed. The Margrave plainly thinks highly of you. The innkeeper's hearty manner disappears and he addresses you earnestly. It is clear It is clear you are a mighty warrior. I beg you, in memory of your friendship with Baron Thaldor, uh, Thaldor, to rid this town of evil. Why our Margrave does not help us, I cannot guess. No doubt he has good reason. We are afraid of strangers these days. The Baron returned from his last trip south with a retinue of foreign swordsmen. They treat the town as if it belonged to them. But worst of all, people are simply disappearing, and at night there are things roaming at the streets. No one knows what they are, but if anyone wanders outside after nightfall, he never returns home. Sometimes we find pools of blood and the tracks of a large beast. I can offer you little advice. Above all, do not venture outside after dark. Do not even sh uh, do not even open the shutters in your room. Uh, tomorrow you should seek our old Hugh at the ruined temple to Oiden. He is the oldest man in Neuburg. People say he is half mad, but I have found that his words contain much wisdom. Now you should sleep. Remember what I have told you, and please help us if you can. The innkeeper shows you to your room. Turn to 179. And here is where I am going to stop the video. So...
in the next video uh, we will be um, reading paragraph 179 I'll just put that on, th on the thing there we go um, yeah in the next video I will be reading paragraph 179 thanks for watching and goodbye